Since the combat and ability update, we have seen some major changes to most of the archetype abilities in Blood Hunt. And with Scholar now shaking the meta up, it was time I updated my archetype tier list for this spring. In this video, I will be ranking each archetype on their survivability, movement potential, ability strength, and ease of use. Let's start off our list with the latest addition, Scholar. Scholar has an amazing set of abilities, allowing for both insane movement possibilities and consistent survivability thanks to the Levitation and Bloodlance combination. Their kit only gets better with the reveal on any enemy you damage, and is extremely powerful in the hands of a skilled and aggressive player. The biggest downside to Scholar, however, is the skill requirements to get the most out of their abilities. Levitation will make you an easy target if used at the wrong time, and the other abilities mostly require you to have good aim to benefit from them. Scholar has also recently received some nerfs to their abilities, bringing them a little closer to the rest of the archetypes in terms of balance. Even with these nerfs though, I would still rate Scholar an S tier archetype, but be aware that you will need some practice to get the most out of their abilities. Warden has seen multiple buffs to the Shackles ability, and now prevents enemies who break the chain from climbing for a short duration, on top of the already powerful slowdown. Their passive must be one of the most powerful abilities in the game, but the lack of any movement ability means you will struggle to survive situations you could with other archetypes. Warden is fairly easy to use, but lacks the potential outplays that other abilities can offer, forcing you to really think about every engagement, so I rate Warden a C tier archetype. Prowler has underperformed for what seems like forever, but with a new damage buff to any revealed target, their scouting Famulus has gone from an almost useless ability to one that you should absolutely be using in every encounter. Prowler's passive ability remains a great way to track down any fleeing enemies to reduce their survivability, but in a similar fashion to Saboteur, you have to master parkour to get the most out of yours. Prowler remains a very easy archetype to pick up, and is even stronger when played in a team, so I rate them an A tier archetype. Siren has also seen some buffs to the already powerful Blinding Beauty, and will now also silence flash targets for a short duration. This has tipped the scale from being a powerful attack that only skilled players could pull off in the right circumstances, to a deadly weapon that anyone can get their hands on. In a similar fashion to Vandal though, Siren can sometimes require burning both abilities to get the full potential damage output, so they lack a little in survivability against incoming teammates or third parties. The projection dash can be a lifesaver though as you can quickly teleport to safety at any time so I rate Siren an A tier archetype. Vandal has been a go-to for aggressive players for a long time, but with other archetypes being buffed and inconsistencies in the Earthshock ability, Vandal has been falling behind the rest of the pack for a while now. Vandal's abilities are very strong and are great at dealing immense damage in short bursts, but with the overly aggressive playstyle you need to adopt to get the most out of them, you can often find yourself in bad situations, which hurts your survivability. Once you figure out the playstyle though, Vandal is a fairly easy archetype to play, but still maintains a high skill ceiling if you use a slam as a secondary movement ability instead. Until we can see some improvements to the slam consistency, I will have to rate them as a B tier archetype. Enforcer remains one of the go-to picks for newer players, as Flesh of Marble can massively increase your survivability and is an easy way to survive poor positioning or a surprise attack when timed correctly. The issues start however when we look at movement potential, as the dash will be your only potential boost, and by using it as a movement ability, you sacrifice the strongest part of it, the damage and silence. Enforcer remains a powerful choice, but there is a real trade-off between ability power or mobility, so I rate them as a B tier archetype. Saboteur is a personal favourite of mine, as they can be great fun when played aggressively, and with recent buffs to the sewer bomb, it is now easier than ever to dominate in endgame situations. Their abilities are aimed at newer and more passive players, but you will need a lot of practice to get the most out of your bomb placements. As Vanish is lacking any verticality, you will also need to learn some parkour to increase your survivability, as you can't realistically count on your passive against skilled players. 
Vanish remains a great ability to reposition and reset a fight though, so I rate Saboteur as an A tier archetype. Muse has been the least changed archetype in terms of abilities and balance since our last tier list. Their abilities remain very strong however, and are aimed at giving you the best possible survivability the game can offer. And it doesn't stop when you are downed, as you can often escape a finisher or help nearby allies finish the fight. The projection dash may not be the best for movement, but it still allows you to reposition with ease in fights, and can be picked up by both new and veteran players. So I rate Muse as an S tier archetype. Brute has seen some major buffs to their shockwave punch since our last tier list, which only improves his already amazing ability strength. The shockwave punch is a great counter to many other archetypes, and remains one of the most versatile abilities in the game. Brute's movement potential remains a solid option, allowing you to aggressively push enemies, or easily reposition in a fight to get your passive healing working, and increase your survivability overall. Brute is a fairly easy archetype to pick up, but has a high skill ceiling, meaning that everyone can find value in their abilities, so I would rate Brute as an S tier archetype. Let me know down in the comments if your favourite archetype made it out on top, or if you're planning on changing your main. And that's it from me, come on over to my Twitch channel to bag some free legendary drops, or check out some of my other Blood Hunt videos.